How's it going, everyone? Nick with Phoenix here, and today we are going to talk about The Flash Season 7, Episode 4, titled Central City Strong. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, this episode's pretty interesting. Um, we've begun the rebuilding of uh, Central City. It. As um, a byproduct of the damages that, uh, apparently this time we actually need to rebuild as a whole city. Um, the damages caused by, um, <sighs> Mirror Monarch. Sorry, it's just, um, I feel really out of it. Anyway, because, because of the severity of the damages, not only to the city, but to the people of Central City... Done by Mayor Monarch. Um, people are just lining up to volunteer. Uh, we also have like a trauma counseling type thi uh, thing with Iris where she goes to... Tr at, at first, it's in an attempt to interview people. But later on, she realizes, no, like I need to... Like she actually needs to say her piece. You know, she is a victim as well. And... We also see Barry uh, overcompensating f for the guilt. Like, it's very much overcompensating for the guilt he feels over the fact that he couldn't see that Mirror Iris was Mirror Iris as opposed to real Iris. Uh, he's taken Iris to other countries, uh, brought her things from other countries. He's... Essentially using the Speed Force as a toy uh, to take Iris on romantic getaways and while normally I'm not against this, I, I do feel he needs to slow down. Iris, of course, tries to write an article about Mirror Monarch's uh, actions and whatnot, but all of it is stuff that was dealt with before by other news agencies. And so Allegra points it out and just says, this article is shit. <laughs> like, she tried to, like, censor herself, but Iris wouldn't let her. Now, for the meat and potatoes. Actually, hold up. Before we get to the meat and potatoes of the episode. Caitlin and um, Frost start having headaches. Um... Yeah. Uh, and uh, while her, while Frost and Cisco look into try and figure out what's causing it, they don't. They don't. Uh, you know, <laughs> and we do find out at the end of the episode. I'll tell. I'll I'll drop the bombshell later. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you guys what happens later. Anyway, of course. Now the meat and potatoes of this episode. Abracadabra is back. Um, Abracadabra is back, and his goal is to hurt Barry by destroying Central City. He has created through the power of three nanotech obelisks. I, I actually don't know if they're actually nanotech or not, but you know, I'm just gonna go with the idea that they're nanotech because his powers are originally nanotech that he calls magic we know magic exists in, in a manner of speaking uh within dc but I, i'm not 100 percent sure if it exists in arrowverse uh i don't recall if like someone like Zeta no it does exist constantine never mind okay so yeah we do know uh that magic exists in arrowverse but i'm not 100 percent sure if in continuity, Abracadabra uses magic or nanotech like pre-crisis. Anyway, uh, we find out uh, later in the story that the reason Abracadabra is here and very angry with the Flash and wanting to hurt him is simply because he had a family pre-crisis, um, a family that no longer exists in this post-crisis multiverse. And so, in a fit of grief, um, uh, 
he wants to hurt Barry because Barry survived when he was supposed to die. <laughs> Which technically is not true. Uh, Barry Allen was supposed to die. No one ever said it had to be Earth-1 Barry Allen. Earth-90 Barry Allen is the one who died. That's still a, Bur a Barry Allen who died. Right? Everyone everyone, and their mother within Arrowverse was like, Barry Allen must die. So we all thought, oh my god, no, it's Earth-1 Barry Allen. Nope, turns out it was Earth-90 Barry Allen. The prophecy was fulfilled. All is well with the world, right? The Barry Allen of a show uh, uh, from a show that got cancelled, like, in the 90s is, uh, is the one who died. Old man Barry Allen, essentially. Still Barry Allen. Still the Flash. Anyway. But, yeah, he cl he wants revenge on the Flash for surviving Crisis when his family didn't. They find um, Cisco's ring that was used to restore the memories of Mia Queen. Well, her memories of being Mia Smoke. Which... We never got to see the full fallout of that because uh, Green Arrow and the Canaries was cancelled and didn't become a show, which, sadness, I, I was really hoping to watch that. I was looking forward to that, but hey, I guess Green Arrow is no more. Feels bad, man. Anyway, <sighs> he uses the ring that Cisco made to restore memory memories a la Martian telepathy and whatnot. To get his memories back in the future, um, in the 64th century. And he discovered, obviously, it was because of the Flash. And so he went back in time, right? Now, the Flash managed to talk him down from blowing up Central City with an antimatter bomb. And... Abracadabra re re revealed his name is Philippe. And he also decided to... Honor his fa the memory of his family members, not by getting revenge, but by being an ally. Unfortunately, in comes the strength force behemoth. <laughs> like, this is just a behemoth of an individual. They're, like, 10 feet tall, like, completely jacked muscle. Because, obviously, strength force, you know, they've, they've got big muscles for the big strength. Uh, and it kills Philippe. When he tries to not only blow it up with the antimatter bomb, which it apparently survived, which, yikes, that's uh, pre pretty scary. And two, tries to make him disappear, turn him into a obelisk or whatever it was that Philippe was trying to do <laughs> before he died. Literally, it one punched Philippe to death. And Barry got mad, tried to speed force lightning it, it absorbed the speed force lightning, and I'm just like, oh no. And then nearly killed the Flash. Um... Luckily, speed healing is a thing, and his speed healing and his speed in general is now enhanced with the recharged speed force. <sighs> of course, we find out that Joe needs to now go meet with someone or other, and Sistio also has to meet with clients, and so they go off to parts currently unknown. We'll find that next episode, probably. Now! How does the episode end? I did say I was going to promise to say it, guys. Uh, obviously, I have to cover this. Um, So, Cisco yells at uh, Chester uh, for beating him at Fortnite. Which, I mean, you know, you gotta got have some downtime, right? I, I wish they'd play other games besides, you know, Fortnite. You know, the meme shooter, right? right? Like, play CSGO, play COD. Not Fortnite, come on. That's like the meme one. Of course, it's also the most well-known, so that's why that was the chosen game that they decided to say on screen. Caitlyn walks in, and he's like, oh, more headaches? He's like, no, it's gone. He's like, really? Uh, I want to show you something. And out comes Frost. Not as Caitlyn, Caitlyn's alter ego, but as an entirely different person. Well, well then. Interesting. Yes, that's all I have to say. Obviously, like, whoa, what the fuck? One of my favorite characters in Air in Arrowverse is now not one character but two. I'm very confused. <laughs> like, 
does this, does this mean my I have two favorite characters now instead of do I have to count them as two characters or is it or are they still one character right? Because I'm like, yeah, Caitlyn Snow is my favorite character. I love like the dynamic between her and Frost, and they're essentially the same person, right? They inhabit the same body. They're just like two people in one character. So I was just like, yeah, it's fine, right? You know, they're my favorite one of my favorite characters, but now they're two characters. I'm confused. I don't know how to feel about this. Um, I, I I guess I should be grateful they didn't kill off Caitlyn and Frost or write them off the show. I'm just going to go with I'm grateful they didn't kill the character off. Because, uh, you know, we have enough of that. With uh, this week's Batwoman episode. Um, if you guys haven't seen the review of that, please go watch it. Anyway, overall, I thought this episode was actually pretty amazing. It had some really decent character development. Uh, I do wish Abracadabra didn't die, but of course, you know, the future is not yet written. We don't know is Abracadabra dead. Technically, because Abracadabra is from the future, he could come back at any time, right? Any change that the characters make in like the next coming up episodes can bring back Abracadabra. So he's not dead, dead. He's just, this version of Abracadabra is dead. He can still come back, you know, 64th century. That's a lot of uh, time travel shenanigans in the middle that can be used to, oh yeah, there was a speedster in like the 50th century that fucked up with the timeline. And now Abracadabra's back and his family's back. You know, they could go like that, right? You know, speedsters that don't have the lessons of Barry Allen of don't fuck with the timeline. <laughs> anyway, I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. That's going to be it for this video. If you guys haven't already, hit like, hit subscribe if you're new. I will see you guys next time. And as always, stay bright.